Okay, just a quick review where we ended up last time. We had begun to, after our review of ME311, we had begun to talk about ME312 material and we discussed pipes in series. We worked a little example with pipes in series and you've got a Homer problem, which was a pipe in series uh, problem. Okay, now our next topic then is going to be pipes in parallel. All right, so similar to what we did in pipes in series, we're gonna draw a couple of sketches here. <clears throat> and the first one is a simple one where a pipe coming in branches and this is our pipes in parallel. We'll call this point one, this point two, this is pipe A, this is pipe B. And the flow rate coming into the parallel pipe Q and the flow rate leaving the parallel pipe, of course, is Q, steady state. Some of the flow goes through pipe A, some of the flow goes through pipe B in parallel. <coughs> First of all, continuity. The flow that comes in, Q equal QA plus QB. The uh, head loss equation, energy, HFA equal HFB. The head loss due to friction in pipe A equal the head loss due to friction in pipe B. Okay, that's energy equation. Contrast, I'll go back and I'll contrast that with what we did for <coughs> pipes in series. Real quick, I'll do this. This was point one, this was point two, this was pipe A, this was pipe B. This was the flow rate Q. This is Q, this is QA, this is QB. Conservation of mass. The flow that goes through pipe A must equal the flow that goes through pipe B. The head loss equation. The total head loss due to friction is equal to head loss due to friction in pipe A plus the head loss due to friction in pipe B. Okay, so there's two simple ones side by side, parallel and series. Conservation of mass. If they're in series, the flow rate in each pipe is the same to the flow rate coming in. If it's in parallel, the flow rate coming in equals the flow rate through pipe A plus the flow rate through pipe B. These guys add, these guys are equal. Now the energy equation from one to two. Okay, assume it's horizontal, okay. Um, <coughs> HFA, the head loss through pipe A, equal HFB, the head loss through pipe B. Maybe to put it in more general terms, uh, because the head loss can be related to the pressure drop, delta P one to two over gamma is equal to HFA equal HFB. That's the energy equation from one to two. So HFA is related to the pressure drop one to two. If I've got this pipe and the pressure drop in this pipe is 10 PSI, the pressure drop in pipe B has to be 10 PSI, has to be 10 PSI. So that's HFA equal HFB. That's where it comes from, the energy equation. Uh, if they're in series, if the pressure drop in pipe A is 10 PSI and the pressure drop in pipe B is 10 PSI, guess what the pressure drop from one to two is? 10 plus 10 is 20. Right, right. So they're different. Q's add, Q's are equal. 
HFs are equal, HFs add. Okay, series, parallel, that's the difference. I'm gonna erase him now because we did this last time. <coughs> now last time with the series, we also looked at this problem where we've got a reservoir here and this is gonna be point one and we've got a pipe A and a pipe B going down here to a reservoir down here, which is our point two. This is pipe A, this is pipe B. QA, QB. And the same equations, the same equations hold, I'll write them down. QA plus QB equal the total flow rate from the two reservoirs Q. Okay, energy, now energy, delta Z is equal to HFA or HFB. Take your choice, it's the same. Okay, here, 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 you see how similar they are. So over here, somebody could ask you, as maybe the homework we just did, there's delta Z. If delta Z is 50 meters, what's the flow in pipe A, what's the flow in pipe B? Matter of fact, I'll write down what kind of things you could be given and asked for. In a problem like this, <coughs> uh, you could be given QA or QB. Solve for Q, uh, solve for uh, either one you don't know, QA or QB, and solve for, let's just say the pressure drop one to two. Or you could be given the total flow rate Q. Solve for, again, QA, QB, delta P one to two. Or you could be given delta P one to two. Solve for Q A, Q B, and Q. Okay, let's go over here. This guy, uh, actually, it's it's the same thing. Just replace delta P with delta Z. Okay. Same, except replace delta P 1-2 with delta Z. For instance, given the total flow rate Q in that problem, solve for QA, QB, and delta Z. Okay, that's what it means. Three unknowns, how many equations? One, two, three, there they are. Two energies, one continuity, conservation of mass. That's two equations right here, equal sign, two equations. Okay, so first thing you want to identify is what kind of problem do you have? Um, for instance, what's that problem over there? I don't know, it's some big complex network. There's series pipes, there's parallel pipes. You're looking at one parallel pipe combination there. This one's two reservoirs, water flowing from one to the other. But this is, this is very typical of those kind of problems. Okay, so we're gonna take, um, let's see, I'm gonna solve for a delta P. So I'll do one of these guys. Delta P, and the problem I've got is I know QA. All right, I got this guy. So here's my problem. Um, <clears throat> QA is given 0 0.100, Q 
cubic meters per second. <coughs> LA, diameter of pipe A, roughness of pipe A. Pipe B, All right, so 20 meters, 20 centimeters. Epsilon, one one hundredth. No, let's see, epsilon, two millimeters, pardon me. All right, uh, LB, 25 meters. Diameter of B, 25 centimeters. Epsilon sub B. 2.5 millimeters. Okay. Uh, fine Q, well, here it is. Fine Q, I know, I know Q A, yeah. Fine Q, Q B, delta P12. And the problem, I'm going to erase this middle one now so I make room here. So we're not doing this one. Okay. There they are. There they are. I know QA. I don't know QB. Um, When I use the energy equation, HF, I need, I need F, we know that, we talked about that last time. I need F. Sometimes I've got to guess F if I don't know the flow rate, but if I know the flow rate, I can solve for F. I know the flow rate in pipe A, I'm not going to guess. All right, step one, get the velocity in pipe A. All right, QA over area of pipe A. QA given. Divided by pi over four. Diameter is 20 centimeters squared. 3.183. Got it. Reynolds number, pipe A. I used VD over nu. Velocity. Diameter. Kinematic viscosity. Reynolds number, 6.37 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, got it. <clears throat> I go to the Moody chart. I've got different curves. We looked at these last time. I gave you a copy of a Moody chart to look at rather than the textbook. So if you, wanna, if you missed it last time, I've got a copy of the Moody chart for you. I want to find F for pipe A. Okay. Review of, of the first fluids, fluids one class. I go to the Reynolds number, 6.4 times 10 to the fourth. I have to go up to the relative roughness curve E over D. So E over D of pipe A. Okay, epsilon two millimeters, yeah. Diameter 200 millimeters. Two divided by 200, 0 0.010. <coughs> 
I go here to that line, 0 0.010. It's labeled like that on the Moody chart you've got a copy of. I go up here. I read across horizontally until I get the value of FA.038. I didn't guess it, I got it exactly. Okay. FA. Okay. Now, um, after that, let's see my next step. Okay, let's look over here. I'm going to use him next. HFA has to be equal to HFB because they're in parallel. There it is written out, Darcy Weisbach equation. I'm going to cancel out the 2G. I'm going to cancel out the 2G. Um, <clears throat> so I know FA 0 0.038. LA 20 over DA 0.2. OK, VA squared. I know VA. VA 3.183 equal FB, I don't know FB, LB 25 divided by 0.25. Okay, uh, times my velocity in uh, pipe, this is uh, pipe B squared. Yeah. Okay, that's for pipe B. <clears throat> One equation, two unknowns. Okay. Uh, start the guessing game. Uh, okay, I don't, I've got to find a guess for FB. There's a Moody chart. Uh, first, I'm going to get the relative roughness of pipe B. Epsilon over D of pipe B. 2.5 millimeters divided by 250 millimeters. 0 0.010. Notice they're the same. Epsilon over D. Epsilon over D is the same. I don't know, I don't know the Reynolds number, obviously. So what I normally would do would be go over to the Moody chart, take a ruler, lay the ruler down where the flat part of the curve is, horizontal part, extend that ruler to the F axis and take that as my first F guess. Well, it turns out it's pretty close to this. If I put a ruler on this line right here, you can do it yourself with what I gave you. It's really close to that. So I'm going to say my first guess for FA is 0.038, FB, uh, pardon me. First guess is 0 0.038. Got it. Okay, solve for B, B, B. I get V, B equal <coughs> 3.183. That's interesting, it's the same as VA, the same velocity in both pipes. You wouldn't know that, it's not normally true. But I made this problem up so the numbers were really simple. I didn't want to hide things by, so I made these timers up so everything kind of cancels out. 20 divided by this is equal to 25 divided by that. This was equal to that. Okay, I did it on purpose to make life easy. Okay, but okay, so that's okay, it can happen. There it is. Is that what I want, QB? No, no, it's not QB yet. Don't forget, QB. QB. 
equal VB times area in B. Um, well, okay, we'll do it the right way. We'll do it the right way. I don't know if that's right or not. Why? Because I guessed it. I've got to check my guess now. So there's VB. So now from that, get the Reynolds number, pipe B, and you get Reynolds number for pipe B, then take that velocity times the diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity, 7.96 times 10 to the fourth. 7.96 times 10 to the fourth. Go back over to the Moody chart. Here it is, 7.6 times 10 to the fourth. Go vertically up until you hit the relative roughness line label 0 0.01. There it is. Go horizontally across. Thank you very much. It didn't change. It didn't change. From Moody. FB didn't change. So, no more iteration. If it would have changed, and in this exam situation, you just tell me. I would repeat the above calculations based on this new FB until the FB value converged. That's all you say, so I know what you would do as a next step. In this case, it converged immediately. Okay, so once I get this, okay, now I'm going to go maybe up here. Now I'm going to get QB. Now I know that's the correct velocity, 3.183 times the area, pi over 4, d squared. So my QB, 0 0.156. Okay, now I want Q. There's the equation over there for Q. Got it. <clears throat> the third question, what is delta P? There's the equation over there, I wrote it down for you. Take your choice, take your choice, either HF1 or HF2 because they're in parallel. So delta P is equal to gamma times HFA, gamma F L over D V squared over 2G. Gamma 9810. So delta P comes out to be 19.25 kPa. Pressure drop from 0.1 to 0.2 in this picture right here with those two pipes. So you do it the same way no matter whether it's this problem or the problem with two reservoirs separated by a distance delta Z, that's the way you approach all these guys. Okay, now, any questions on that then? Okay, second step. This is the last part of the chapter six material. Last part of chapter six material. Um, uh, I'll start over here. Pipes in series, pipes in parallel, and now branching pipes. Okay, here's what a branching problem looks like. Let's take uh, three reservoirs. Um, this one will be reservoir C. 
this one will be reservoir B, and this one will be reservoir A. Okay. <clears throat> and they're connected by pipes. So this guy down to here, this guy down to here, this guy down to here. We call this point J stands for junction. That's the junction point. This elevation uh, we're going to call Z3. This elevation Z2. This elevation we'll call Z1. Um, typically, we know the elevations Z1, Z2, and Z3. And the question that is asked is, what are the flow rates in those three pipes? Okay. <coughs> this is pipe A, this is pipe B, this is pipe C. They come together at J. Okay. So, we um, write our equations. And we start off, we'll start off with um, pipe, let's do pipe, I guess this one first, A to J. So energy A to J. Okay, um, energy equation P1 over gamma, V1 squared over 2G. Z1 equal P at J, V at J squared over 2G, ZJ plus the friction loss H in uh, that particular uh, pipe. Um, I think, I guess I call that, I don't know why I did that, but okay, I call that H1. That's in uh, pipe A. That's the friction loss in that pipe right there. OK. Um, free surface, P1, zero gauge pressure, zero. We talked about this before from pipes in series in parallel. Normally, the textbook, if you read it, says, uh, we're going to neglect the, the, the difference in kinetic energy. We, we know V1 is zero. We'll get rid of that guy. We're going to neglect that guy right there because he's typically a lot smaller than any other term in the equation. Okay, so I'll believe him. Textbook says, we typically neglect that term because this value is a lot smaller than the other terms in the equation. Okay, we neglect him. Okay, so we're left with <coughs> our first uh, energy equation. So we have, and we're going to let, let change this to be, um, let Pj over gamma plus Zj equal hydraulic grade line at J. Um, just kind of as an interesting thing. How many people's ME 311 instructor mentioned hydraulic and energy grade lines? How many didn't? About half and half, I thought so, yeah. It depends who you have and how much time they have. That's okay, that's okay. Um, just so you know, these three terms together, that's called the energy grade line. If you knock him out, those two terms are called the hydraulic grade line. It's used a lot in civil engineering. They really beat it into you there. Maybe not so much in mechanical. It has some interesting uses, graphically especially. But that's okay. Don't worry about it if you haven't been exposed to it. All you know is that when you add these two terms together, they're titled hydraulic grade line, HGL. Okay, that's energy A to J. We do the same thing. Energy B to J. And we get uh, this equation. 
Oh, by the way, I didn't complete this. Let me complete this first. <clears throat> Put, uh, replace these two guys with uh, that. So we uh, get Z1 equal hydraulic grade line at J plus H1. Now we go energy B to J, okay? I'm not gonna go through all the gory details again. We, um, we get this one, uh, Z2 equal hydraulic grade line at J um, <coughs> plus H2. And then we go energy C to J Z3. Okay. When we write that energy equation, those three energy equations, this is not right. We know, we know we're wrong, but this is, we're assuming the flow rate's going down here, going down here, and going down here. Every one of these start out up here, down to J. Up at two, down to J. Up at three, down to J. That's the three boxed equations. We know they're wrong, we'll correct them later. But for right now, we don't know which way all these flow rates go. I do know some, but I don't know some other ones. Well, when I work the problem and example, I'll show you. But that's assuming all these flow rates go down, which we know can't happen. Okay, the last equation, conservation of mass at J. The flow rates that come in. equals zero, got it. Three energies, one conservation of mass. Okay. We can have four unknowns, okay, three equations. I'm mean, four equations, we can have four unknowns. You probably know what they are. Here's Q1, Q2, Q3. There's three of them. The other guy, <coughs> I don't know the pressure of J. Hydraulic grade line of J. <laughs> Four unknowns, Q1, Q2, Q3, hydraulic grade line of J. Four equations. Theoretically, I can solve those algebraic equations. Okay, so that, that's the approach you use. Now, we'll work a problem with numbers to see how that cranks out. Okay, so let's start off, and um, I'm gonna maybe leave this same picture up here. Yeah, I'm just gonna change some things here. Um, okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna start with just how the problem's posed to you. Here it is. Um, Z1 equal, I'll do an English problem, 100 feet. Z2 equal 80 feet. Z3 equal 50 feet. Okay, um, let's see, pipe. Well, okay. This is, call this pipe one. I hate to call it pipe AJ, it makes it too complex. I'm gonna call that pipe one. Oh, uh, yeah, that's okay, that's fine. Uh, pipe one. <coughs> D1, L1, Epsilon one. Copying the wrong line. That is a eight inch pipe. And epsilon one. Okay, D two, L two, epsilon two. Okay, D two, thousand foot long pipe. 
It's uh, eight inches in diameter. Uh, the roughness of that pipe is the same, 0 0.004 feet. Okay, D3, L3, Epsilon 3. Pipe 3 is uh, 2,000 feet long. Its diameter is 12 inches, one foot. Its uh, roughness, its, its rougher pipe, 0 0.04. Okay, yeah. Should the other two diameters oh, be Oh, yeah, they should be. Thank okay. you so much, yeah. As I said before, that's a, that's a big pipe. <laughs> As I said before, if you see something on this board where it doesn't make any sense to you, I want you to tell me now so everybody's notes are the same when they leave class and their notes are correct. Good, thank you so much. Okay. Well, you know, or ask for, or ask for Q1, Q2, and Q3. So find Q1, Q2, Q3. Okay, so that's our starting point. Um, just so you know, I'll put one of these guys here. I don't know how I draw the gray line of J. I don't know F1. I don't know V1, three unknowns. I don't know how I draw the gray line of J. I don't know F2. I don't know V2. I don't know how I draw the gray line of J. I don't know F3. I don't know V3. Boy, that's a tough start. Well, obviously, this is one of the tougher one of the three, series parallel and branching. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not easy. Okay, um, got to start somewhere. Um, I'm going to guess the F's. If you don't know the F's, you got to guess the F's. Okay, so epsilon over D of pipe one. Epsilon over D of pipe two. Epsilon over D of pipe three. I'm not going to, it's 0 0.006 and point, uh, zero, um, yeah, point zero zero six. Okay, uh, pipe two, I don't think I got pipe two down there. Yes, I, okay, yeah, okay. It's the same in pipe B. It's pipe B and pipe, uh, they're both the same, zero, zero, four, eight inches, eight inches, yeah, okay. Zero, zero, six. And now the third one is 0 0.04. Whether you want to use an equation or whether you want to use a Moody chart, that's your, your decision to make. I'm going to use the Moody chart, though. So I go over here. I don't know the Reynolds number. Here's the rule. If you don't know it, First of all, find the relative roughness curve. Um, let me see if I can find one that um, maybe is, uh, yeah, here we go. Mm, zero, four, but it's really rough. Yeah, I can find him. Zero, zero, six, yeah, I can find zero, zero, six, okay. They're both, they're both um, on that over there. So there's one line, label 0 0.006. And one line on Moody chart is labeled 0, 04. I don't need to interpolate between those lines, luckily. I take my ruler. I start out here where it's flat. It's flat right there. Yep, it is. I put my ruler on here. 
I get my first guess for the F006 value. And I get 0 0.032. Okay, so first guess. F pipe one, zero point zero three two. First guess, pipe two F equals zero point zero three two. First guess, go over here, find the epsilon over D relative roughness, point zero four, put a ruler on the flat part of the curve, put a ruler on it, Extend that horizontal line over to here, and my first guess for F for that pipe, 0 0.065. Got it. All right, so now I've got those Fs as a guess. Okay, now I'm going to try and solve these guys. So here's what I've got to realize. I guarantee you, I know which way the flow goes in that pipe. I know that, that's not a guess. It's gonna go down because that reservoir is the highest reservoir of the three. So I know Q goes down that way. This is the lowest of the three reservoirs. It's not a guess. I know the flow always goes down to the lowest reservoir. Yeah, there it is. Those two guys I know. This is a guy I'm worried about. I'm not sure which way he goes right now. I'm going to find out. But I don't know when I start. OK. So how many unknowns are there? Uh, one, two, three. Oh, when I started, how many unknowns were there? F1, V1, three here. F2, V2, three, four, five. F3, V3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 unknowns, 7 unknowns. How many equations? Oh, here they are now. 1, 2, 3, 4, here they come. Pipe 1, 5. Pipe 2, 6 equations. Pipe 3, 7 equations. Moody chart, 3 equations, 7 equations, 7 unknowns. Simple problem? Oh my gosh, no, it's not a simple problem. It's a very complicated problem. So what I do first, I guess three F values. What's left? Four unknowns. How many equations? Four. Good, I'm on my way now. I got to do some more guessing No. Oh, you'll love these problems. Oh, I'm sorry, not, you'll like them maybe. You're gonna guess velocities? No, I mean, what am I gonna guess? One foot per second, 50 feet per second? Not a smart guess. There's a smart guess and a not so smart guess. I'm gonna guess hydraulic grade line. So next. I'll tell you another not too smart guess. Yeah, I, I said guess V. I'm gonna guess Q1. Okay, I'll ask anybody in class. The guy says, how do I know? 10 cubic meters per second? 100 cubic meters per second? A thousand cubic meters per second? How do I know, Dr. Biddle? I'll say, you know what, you're right. You have no idea, do you? He said, no, I don't know. I'm going to ask you guess hydraulic gray line. And I'll tell you what it better be. This is what it better be. It better be no higher than Z1, <laughs> okay? And it better be no lower than Z3, okay? If it's lower than Z3, the flows, all the flows <laughs> end up coming down. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. So don't, you, you're gonna make your first guess for that. It's, it, it's a bounded guess between these two guys. Okay, Z1, 100. Z3, 50. Some books say, you might as well play the easy game. Guess the middle one, 80. If this is 80 feet and this is 80 feet, the flow rate's zero there to start with. Okay, I understand that, that's fine, you can do that. If you want, what you might wanna do, is if you don't know these guys, make your first guess hydraulic grade line as the middle one, 80. I said, you know what, I'm just gonna guess 75. It's halfway between 100 and 50. I guessed halfway between. So hydraulic grade line to J equals 75. 
Okay, now here it goes. He's 100, he's 75, water goes down. By the way, this is all water, just so you know. This is 75, this is 80. This is 75, this is bigger, 80. Flow goes up. This is 75, this is 50. Flow goes up. So I guess 75, okay. Oh wait, that was Z2 is 80. I'm sorry, I got a flip-flop. That was 80, that's 75, pardon me. So I'll put it up here so I get them right. 100 feet, 80 feet, 50 feet. Okay, my first guess. Hydraulic grade line J equals 75. 100 is greater than 75, flow is down. 80 is greater than 75, flow is down. 75 is greater than 50, flow is up. Okay, do I need to change my equations now? Well, of course I do. I'm gonna write the, the equation from here down to there, okay? From Z1 down to J. There it is. Z1 equal hydraulic grade line at J plus F1, L1, D1, V1 squared over 2G. Okay. Z1, 100. My guess, 75. F1, my guess, 0.032. L1, 2,000. Diameter, 8 inches, 2 thirds. times the velocity squared, V1 squared, divided by 2G, got it, 32.2. V1 equal 3.34 feet per second. So Q1, V1 times A1, 1.167, 1.167. Cubic feet per second. Okay, that's pipe one. <coughs> pipe two flows going from the reservoir down to J. Okay, 80. Same thing, except be careful now. Okay, 80, same thing, equal this. So now we have, I'll write it down. Z2 equal hydraulic grade line at J plus F2, L2 over D2, V2 squared over 2G. Here we go, Z2 is 80. My guess hydraulic grade line was 75. My guess for F2, 0.032. L2 over D2, 1,000 and uh, two thirds. A thousand and two thirds times V2 squared over 2G. Solve for V2. V2 comes out to be 2.59 feet per second. So Q2 equal V2 A2, 0.905. cubic feet per second. Got it. Now comes the third one. The flow goes from J to here. Don't write it like this because this one assumed the flow went from Z3 down to J. No, it went, it's the other way. So now this equation is flip-flopped. Hydraulic grade line at J equals Z3 plus F3, L3, D3, V3 squared over 2G. You have to change the equation to fit the way the flow is going.
Okay, hydraulic grain on J, what did I guess? 75, yeah. What's Z3? 70, yeah. What's my guess on F3? 0 0.065. Did I, did I get it right? I'm sorry? For Z3. For Z, oh, this one? Oh, thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, right, uh, L3, way over there, L3, 2,000 divided by one. V3 squared over 2G. So V3 comes out to B. Yeah? On the Z1. Which one now? I'm sorry, on Z1. This one? Yeah. Uh -huh. on, so for D1, would it be 0.75? Uh, yes. Or would it be 0.75? No, 8 twelfths is 2 thirds. That's so. Oh, is he? No, he's 2 thirds. 8 twelfths is 2 thirds, oh, 0.667. Right. Uh huh. Uh, V3 is 3.52. Uh, then uh, Q3 is equal to V3 times A3, 2.763 cubic feet per second. Got it. Okay, we're getting there. All right. I used him, I used him, and I used him. I've used three of the four equations. Guess what I do now? I try him, and he better work out to be zero or I'm in deep trouble. Okay. Continuity, conservation of mass. Okay, Q1 plus Q2 comes in, Q3 goes out. I don't know if that's right or not. Let's find out. Q1, 1.167 plus Q2, 0 0.905. Does that equal to Q3, 2.6, 2.763? Two point oh seven two does not equal to two point uh, seven six three. Nope, that didn't work. Nice try though. Good practice anyway. Nope, we didn't satisfy continuity. So I say, okay, all right, so um What's too much and what's not enough? I got too much stuff going to Reservoir 3 and not, not enough stuff coming down. Okay, that's the key. That's the key. I want less flow here. I want less flow here. I want that to be smaller. Only way that guy V3 gets to be smaller is if these two guys are closer together. Okay, now what? Now you know what your next guess is gonna be. Let's see what I guessed. Um, my, uh, where's my next guess? Oh, here we are. I said, you know what? I guess 75. What if I make that 70? That, um, that'll mean the V3 is smaller. That'll mean Q3 is smaller and I might be getting closer to him. Okay, good, good. I'll guess 70. I'll guess 70. I'll guess 70. You make those three changes. I'm guessing 70 now. I'm trying to save some board space here, okay. Now, when I'm done with this, I'll put in, I'll put in, I'll just put the new, I'll put in the new V's, and I'll put in the new Q's, and I'll put in the new V, and I'll put the new Q in. Okay, so now my second guess for hydraulic grade line at J is 70 feet. Okay. 
let's see, I tried 70. Okay, I didn't get the velocities, but I got the Qs. Q1, 1.28. Q2, 1.275. Q3, 2.47. Q in 2.555. Q out 2.477. Oh, I'm getting real close now. 2.6 compared to 2.5. I might just say, oh, I'm tired, I'm done. But not really. You know, you know, sorry about that. Good try, though. Good try. I say, oh my gosh, okay, now, what's my problem now? Um, this is how much comes in. This is how, no, yeah, this is how much goes uh, out. Okay. 2.477. That's, that guy's got to be bigger now. He's got to be bigger. Oh, I went too low. I shouldn't have said 70. I went through this thing two more times. Okay, by hand. It's a, it's a, it's a pain. Got it? That's all right. I got lots, lots of time. Uh, <laughs> real, you know. Uh, I'll tell you the final answer, okay? I'm, I was really close. 70.5. 70.5. When I do that, here's my new Q1. Uh, my new Q1. 1.267. My new Q2, 1.249. My new Q3, 2.516. My comparison now, uh, 2.516. I think I'm close. I'm not sure that's exact numbers. Yes, yes, finally. So now I know the three Qs. I know the hydraulic grade line at J, 70.5. Am I done? Oh, I wish I was done, but I know I'm not. Oh, this is miserable. What did I base those Fs on? <laughs> where it's flat out here. You know it's not gonna be where it's flat out here. What's my next step? With those velocities, one, two, and three, I get a new Reynolds number, I go to the Moody chart with the new Reynolds number, I go up to the epsilon over D, I need to read over here and get .067. Here we go again. All these equations. Make a guess hydraulic grade line. Oh, these are nasty problems. But that's the way it goes in life sometimes. Okay. Now, you'll never be asked on homework or an exam to go through completely and do this stuff. Again, if it would be an exam, I would say go through it one time with a, re with a reasonable guess for hydraulic grade line and solve and see if you satisfy conservation of mass. But don't do any iteration, okay? A lot of times in the textbooks, they'll give you the Fs. They're really nice. They say, assume the F in pipe one, two, and three is blah, 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 blah. Okay, thank you very much. That means less guessing. Now I just guess hydraulic grade line J. So that's typical of homework or even an exam. People don't ask you to go through all that gory detail. In the real world, oh, you go through all the gory details. That's what you paid for. You get the big bucks. You got to work for it. So those guys are called branching pipes, okay? They're really, really a, a more difficult class of problems. But here's the key. There are four equations for four unknowns and how you solve them. Well, we just went through an example of how you solve them. Okay, we just finished chapter six. We're going to start with pumps next time. We're going to stop today. So homework is due on the front desk today, and we'll see you on Friday then.